So it's getting ready. Okay. She's on. So this, uh, Kate Nash, you are the, um, you're bringing in all kinds of new stuff joining our board because we've never done one of these before. I so, love it. So love here it. we are. Five questions with Kate, our newest member of the Promo Cares board. And poor Kate, I didn't even bother to tell her what the questions are going to be. So this is going to be off the cuff. We're going to see how well she dances, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> welcome to the board, Kate Nash. Thank We're you very so happy much. I'm very happy to be here. So crazy to think that in the short amount of time that you've been affiliated with our little group of promo mofos, we've actually already had two board meetings. I love it. Um, might as well start off with a bang, right? Just get her going. And we may want to hint a little bit about a little something that the world's about to find out about what the next thing that Promo Cares is going to do. So we'll tease that at the end. Talk a little bit about what that's going to be because I'm super jazzed about it. And look, I mean, you show up on the scene. Lo and behold, we're ready to do the thing. So I, you you're can't, that's correlation. I don't know that you can connect that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kate, why don't we let, let you tell the people what you do, where you do it, why, you, why you're doing it for that person, and uh, we'll get people introduced to you. All right. All right. So thanks so much. I'm Kate Nash. I head up uh, our uh, Rating Gross Promos sales and marketing team. Um, we're part of a larger company that also does contract manufacturing in addition to personal care promotions uh, right in the heart of America. We are in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and um, I've been a Midwesterner for all my life. So I can go down a rabbit hole there. But um, so we manufacture uh right here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and we make personal care products, including lip balm, sunscreen, hand sanitizer, lotion, um, and we're a certified B Corp. We act for the greater good. Um, and that includes how we formulate our products. So I could go on for a long time about how much more everyone is um, conscious of what they're putting on their body and where it comes from and what it's made from. And um, that's a big part of our ethos as well. So. Um, I hit like two of your five bullet points, Roger. <laughs> when, when did you join the company? Ah, thank you. Um, uh, like a century ago, but really it was just 2019. So like before COVID. Um, and I started as our chief marketing person working over uh, both divisions of our company and then had an opportunity to take over this team um, just last August. And I'm so pleased with it. I love this industry. Um, this is such a fun part of what our company does. So um, I, I feel like I'm new still to the promo world. Before that, I was in higher education marketing and then tech marketing and then came on uh, to Rainy Rose. It was my first interface um, working as, as part of a manufacturer and in the promo space. So as a lifelong learner, it's given me a lot to uh, to jump in and love. So what was it about Raining Rose that was such a draw for you to want to work there? Thanks. Um, here in the Cedar Rapids area, actually, let me take a step back. So there's some DNA connecting this company with a company that I used to work for in the community as well, the higher education uh, marketing company. There was a, a longtime telecommunications company here locally that was a very large employer, um, did very well ahead of the internet.com era. And it, there's this like group of leaders that came up in this company. And then after they'd sort of closed the chapter of working for this telecom firm, they all went out and sort of started other companies in the community. And it's really cool to think about the economics of all this. But they kind of have a similar ethos, these leaders, to the way that they run their companies. So I was really attracted to Rainy Rose because our CEO, Chuck Hammond, um, and his uh, late business partner, Art Christofferson, were both a part of this same group of leaders. And they're very community-minded leaders. So I've so enjoyed working for companies that are rooted locally. Um, and even when they're not, they act local. Uh, they think about the, um, the impact that they're having um, in terms of employment, in terms of good employment, in terms of giving back to the community, um, specifically with Raining Rose, giving back to the environment um, mm -hmm. here and wherever we have an impact. And, uh, you know, I think there's just something special when you join a company that um, cares about so much more than just posting high revenues and profits. Yeah. 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 There's a, a, a guy that wrote a book about that somewhere along the way that talks about <laughs> companies with the uh, motivation beyond just pure profit. They have three things that the research showed us. <laughs> they have uh, 
record sales, they have loyal staff, and they have raving fans and customers most of the time. So not too big of a surprise to recognize how those two things have a way of tying themselves together. Especially now, especially now. I was literally just reading a headline. I'm a huge NPR nerd, right? And they're talking about how um, employee engagement is something we're still finding our footing around post-pandemic. Yeah. And we've got all these things coming together, younger employees especially finding it hard to engage in their lives and engage in their company. And I think too often, too, in companies, we pretend like the other doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. when you're here, you don't have a life. You don't have interests outside of work. And then we um, expect you, though, to be thinking about work all the time um, mm -hmm. when you're out doing those things. And I think I love that the pandemic has accelerated a shift toward, nope, we are whole people. We right. have many and varied interests. And when we embrace all of them, we are we are better in all those uh, facets in our lives. And we're more engaged and we're more able to bring our talents to work. And I think that's something that lines nicely with Raining Rose. And um, yeah, big, big thoughts uh, this morning, <laughs> post pandemic and where we're at. But that's it. The complaint that we hear so frequently from employers is their inability to fill positions. Yes. And when you have clear values organizationally, what you're doing is you're giving your prospective employee the opportunity to really know what it means to work with and for that organization. And to me, I think that in and of itself oftentimes is the differentiator between companies who have spots open and companies who are full. Yeah, I 100% agree. And, you know, as I tie that back to Raining Rose promos and where we are, we're kind of a niche supplier. We we have, you know, really focused product lines. We're not a broad supplier. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of purpose and intention behind that. Um, and we've struggled over the years with like, oh, my gosh, should we start importing more? Should we bring in more products that fit with our core line? And ultimately, we just keep coming back to, you know what, um, you know, we're evangelists over what we do and how we do it. And if we all of a sudden start expanding into five or six areas, um, how can our employees still show up as excited and knowledgeable as they are? Um, and, you know, that's something that, again, we're not going to ever stop struggling. We have a brand promise. We want to fulfill it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I tie that all the way back to how we focused our strategy around what we're going to offer. If, if our sales team, if our marketing team, if our customer service folks can't describe to you with a lot of energy and enthusiasm and knowledge, why Raining Rose and to educate about our products, um, they're just going to feel like they're failing all day, right? Like nobody likes to be in a seat with a customer where they can't answer a question, where despite their best intention, it feels like they might be hiding something. They're not. <laughs> it's just um, there's a lot of knowledge in this industry. There's a lot to know. Um, so yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, a 360 degree lens around what you just said. And, and we tie it all the way back to our strategy and what we offer. Yeah, it, it's for those of us who uh, do business with Raining Rose, it shows straight through. It's completely obvious that that comes from the inner workings of the organization and it's present in the way you communicate, in the way that you share information, like, you know, all of those things. So here we are, you are four years in, you are running a pretty sizable uh, responsibility over there. And Tell the people how you found Promo Cares. Like, how did how did you make your way over to what we're doing? Um, you know, that's such a great question, and you know, I feel like it's one of those things where I, I can't quite recall how I first <laughs> heard about Promo Cares. So, you know, when you're um, as a person with certain fa like passions and interests, or company with certain passions and interests, you kind of gravitate or seek out or find or who knows, right? You start telling people what you're about and then they start telling you other groups that are about that thing and that you should get involved. So I think I'll have to give the credit to my predecessors in this seat, Lindsay Davis, who's now at PPAI, Nate Robson, who's actually our sales VP um, here at Raining Rose. Both um, you know, were paying close attention and contributing where they could to the Promo Cares mission just because it aligns so much with, again, like this concept of doing business for more than profit. Um, how can you make a positive impact? How can you leave things better than how you found them? And um, Promo Cares is such an amazing group in that respect because, one, it's all volunteer driven. Um, so people really want to be a part of it just for that intrinsic motivation. And to the impact that you're able to have, you, you all are moved to act. And I love that I found that um, moving closer and being a part of this team as a member of the board um, you take these really big challenges that are paralyzing to a lot of us 
and you find one way to just do something. And I think that that is so inspiring. And, um, you know, certainly a big reason why I wanted to be closer to it. Um, how do we together tackle these big problems? What can I learn that I can bring back into my own business? And that's sort of like the multiplier effect, right? We're all coming in, you know, working on these problems together as a board, but then we take that inspiration and we take that knowledge. Like, how did Meg move forward on this thing and, you know, just pull together content, pull together steps? How does the, you know, the different members of the groups go back and um, do that for our own causes? But then we move to do that in our businesses as well. I love I, it. I over answered your question. No, but. <laughs> no. So it's so, and I'll, I'll just echo a little bit of what you said there around when we are in board meetings together as a group, the firepower that is in that room is extraordinary. And yes, intelligence, yes, caring, yes, passion and movement to action. But I think many of us are pushed by the other people in the group to want to continue to evolve and grow as individuals and the amplification effect that's occurred as a result of that shared desire. I mean, we don't exist. We're not a tax entity. We are just a logo and a website and some people who care. And yet take a look at the PPAI show floor last month and the evidence of our influence to me was enormous. And whether that was intentional or by accident, I don't really care <laughs> because we saw an opportunity as a group to elevate the perception of what our industry is about. And what an amazing choice to try to take on, to say like, look, this whole idea of we're this industry that goes straight to the garbage has got to stop. And by focusing our effort on doing that, I think we're having a pretty sizable outsized effect in what's happening, whether, like I said, we caused it or it was a byproduct, like it, it's here. And to me, that's the most amazing piece of it. Yeah, I was um, literally driving around thinking of this this weekend. And as you take on um, challenges like sustainability, environmental focus, inclusivity, you know, you look at some of these big things that we're not the only industry striving to evolve into the future in, this, or in, in these ways. We're not. Um, I think a lot of humans look at those issues. And, and if we see a level of inaction, it's just because a lot of us struggle with the enormity of any of them. Mm. Like we see so much change. We see so much possibility. And we struggle to know where to start. So then we just don't. <laughs> and that's a really human instinct, right? So I think surrounding yourself with um, people who seek action, they seek influence, they seek, incre they seek incremental progress is so powerful and positive. And, you know, I think that's a big reason why, you know, I myself wanted to be a part of this board and I wanted to represent my own company because, you know, we really believe that, you know, any step forward is still a good step. You know, I think I hear this a lot in ath athletics, but like progress, not perfection. We're mm -hmm. going to move forward um, and, you know, again, engage and energize people along with us to you know, inspire them to, again, multiply the impact that we can have. But I just think that that's so special. I mean, especially given the challenges that we're all facing and, as, you know, accelerated by the pandemic. I think this is a really cool and special time to be a part of that, this industry because of that. I Yeah. And boy, let's see where this ride takes us because here we are starting another year and the energy that I as a distributor am seeing from my marketplace locally is white hot. It's it's really interesting. You know, we have all of these competing ideas about what's going on within our economy and it doesn't appear to be manifesting its way into people not wanting to buy promotional marketing items. Oh my gosh. Um, I still have to say like, knock on wood, because you know, <laughs> um, but same, um, you know, that our expectations for Expo, our expectations for this month, um, we far outperform them, which is amazing. Um, you know, honestly, I think we all think we're a little due after the couple of years that we've just had. 
Yeah. Um, so, um, but you know, I, you know, coming into you know economic expectations, you know, whatever's going to happen isn't happening evenly. So we can always find an opportunity, and I think we, this industry will. We will this year. Um, so we're feeling overall pretty positive about the year, and you know, going all the way up to all of us seeking connection. Um, those of us, uh, we're all consuming and creating brand work everywhere in our lives, and the role of promotional products in experiential and tangible marketing the impact that they have. Um, you know, anybody who steps back and says certain marketing tactics are dead, they're never dead. And certainly, our product set um, packs such a punch. Um, and for businesses working to kind of forge their way through this year, whatever it might bring, there's a whole lot of opportunity out there for us to go get. Yeah. Take it. Get me excited. I want to go make a sales call. <laughs> Good. So um, what I know about our group is when we add someone, usually the person who's coming is coming with something in mind, something that drives them, something that is their motivator around their passion to, to participate what do you what do you bring into the table what what do you what do you got in mind here as uh you're joining our group i love that question um so the best way i can approach it is you know one just again a sense of learning so you know what are things that you know the best in this business the mo you know the futurists in this business and promo cares are doing that i can adopt and, and further the impact my own company is making so i want to start with learning in mind but second, you know, I think um, going back to this big question, these big challenges we face, again, in terms of the environment and our impact and uh, inclusivity, I hope what I can represent is, um, you know, maybe a fresh lens on the education side of it. So, you know, we work with a really broad array of, array of customers at Rainy Rose, and I'm so proud of that fact. Like, you know, we work with distributors who are very evolved in their sustainability and inclusivity efforts. And we work with a lot of small businesses who see it in a different way. Uh, they look at it in terms of the impact of their own communities. And um, I think there's a lot of common ground there. So, you know, I hope what I can represent, though, is, you know, the emerging group interested in taking the steps forward and that they can. And I think sometimes, you know, when we talk about uh, what actions we can take offsetting our carbon impact and, um, you know, it, it's, it can be still very daunting for a lot of businesses, a lot in our industry who honestly will take the step forward that they can. They just need um, they just need someone to help feed it to them. Like, what's one thing I know you can do in your business? So I think I can represent that perspective um, on our board. And I know I'm not the only supplier representative on our board, but, you know, I think we can talk a lot about, you know, here's how some of these how we chew on some of these questions in our own business and the way that we found a path forward. So, again, you know, we're in the business of, you know, making the impact that we can be on profit. Um, but everybody needs to pay people <laughs> like we all need to make sure that our business is really healthy um, so that we can be good employers, that we can have the impact that we want to have. So, you know, usually what that means is we just need to take a little extra lap around whatever that problem was, make room for that initiative. Um, and I know I can and represent that um, on our board, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what's been really fun to watch as the board has evolved over time has been the, the energy and the passion and this desire to act has catapulted our efforts as fundraisers in really noteworthy kinds of ways that not only have we demonstrated as a group that we're capable of ra raising a decent amount of money, but we're also by virtue of our connections have this incredible amplification effect on the effort because now people are starting to actually approach us about could you do this could you do that the reason we were able to raise sixty six thousand dollars for the humanitarian crisis in ukraine in two weeks time last year was largely driven by the fact that people have seen us now as honest brokers in the space and feel comfortable with their trust level with what we would do as stewards when we try to tackle some of these thornier issues, which, I mean, if you think about what we've done organizationally, we've approached mental health, we've approached 
the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. And now Kate Nash, you and I and the rest of the Promo Cares Board are going to take on water. I love it. And it's ambitious. It's unlike what we've done in previous fundraisers. And yet there's still a heavy fundraising component around it. But now, this time around, we're actually going to give the opportunity for our end buyers to participate in what's going on here by virtue of the product selections that are going to fuel the Water for Good campaign. More on that to come here in the next few days. But the idea around our willingness to say like, okay, what's the next big thing, right? And you and I both know under our hats that there's an even bigger thing that we wanna do once we get done with water. But expanding our focus into bigger societal planetary challenges as opposed to you know the first couple fundraisers we did were very people focused and now these are cause focuses that we're moving towards so i'm for one excited as i'll get out about it i mean how are you feeling about all that i'm sure it's got to be energizing for you really um energizing and exciting and you know i think uh we tap into it's it's a cause i still would argue it's very people oriented like clean water is a human right. right and you know as we again humans tend to not like to think about the things that are really scary um and you know as we look out into the future and the state of our water sources and areas that are especially struggling with clean water um you know i think it's so appropriate that we tap into this um as a board and um i'm way excited to see what we can accomplish. Um, very much excited. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I'm really glad to be a part of this and, um, I really love inviting our, for me, customers and their customers, <laughs> um, uh, into the fundraiser with us. Um, I think we've seen, um, as a supplier that, um, especially post pandemic, people are very motivated by using their purchasing power to have um, an impact on the greater good. So, I think for us, what a great time for us to take on uh, water for good. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right. I'm going to do a quick three question lightning round. All right. Coffee or tea? Oh, coffee. Tea in the afternoon, but coffee is essential. Sweet or savory? I'm a foodie. I have to say both. <laughs> in the Fair. same meal, same dish. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, that umami thing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you hit, hit, hit all the notes, then you're going to get all my money. That's for sure. And uh, would you rather ride a motorcycle or go skydiving? Oh, my gosh. 20-year-old um, me would have said motorcycle. Um, <laughs> year old me would say <laughs> probably skydiving because I don't know. I, I don't know, skydiving because, well, still, like, I, I could maybe do the tandem thing where I still get, like, the rush of adrenaline, um, but without, like, the as much of the fear of dying. <laughs> right. right. Uh, Carrie Cowden likes to ask this question of all of her podcast guests. You are through TSA at the airport. You have time before it's time to get on the plane. What do you do? Oh, my gosh. Um, so I'm a, I'm a, I've got young kids at home. I'm a busy professional. So um, for me, just to get and sit with my thoughts is one of my favorite things in the world to do. And actually, airports are one of my favorite places to do it. So if I have time pre-TSA or post-TSA pre-boarding, I'll go and grab probably a coffee because coffee and then uh, go find a quiet spot at my gate, pop in my earbuds. Either I'm listening to a podcast or some tunes and just people watch and think about the world. And I can't even tell you like the amount of balance I feel <laughs> when I get to do that. <laughs> Who knew TSA, post TSA, pre-board would be your happy place? I know. Actually, now that I say that, I've never really sat with that. Maybe it is. <laughs> well, what's the most impactful book you ever read? <sighs> the most impactful book that I ever read. Um, the last one that I read. Um, I think every time I read a book and finish a story, um, I'm thinking a lot about the journey that that, that story took me on. I'll, I'll just say one recent one. It was a work of fiction. Um, American Dirt is the name of it. Um, and I'm going to struggle to come up with the author, but um, it was on New York Times bestseller recently. And it's a fiction story, but tells the very real perspective 
of a, it, it, it's a story of a middle-class woman in Mexico and her family. Her husband's a journalist um, and is exposing a story about the cartel in that area. And through a series of really unfortunate events, they have to leave the country. And it tells the story of really the, I'll use the word harrowing. I feel like I'm reading the book jacket, but like the harrowing journey um, that, you know, she found herself on working to get her and her son to safety. And along the way, though, telling a really real story of um, the experience of the um, migrant population mm. seeking safety. And mm. I um, I read a lot about how the book came together and the research that the author went through um, to try and understand how to tell that story. And it had such a huge impact on me and thinking about the many humanitarian crises that exist mm. um, and really what just regular moms, dads, people trying to protect their family are going through. So yeah. that one, um, I can think of pretty recently, had a had a big impact on me. And I, I think about it as it relates to the conflict in Ukraine too, actually, so. For sure. That sounds like one that I should be putting in front of my wife. It sounds like she would really enjoy that book. So thank you for the you bet. Uh, recommendation. And then last question, what would be an unusual thing about you that most people don't know? Wow, a lot. I'll own my freak flag. Um, I've got a lot of varied interests. Um, but one thing actually I'll advocate for is um, I was born without the lower half of my right arm and um, I wear a prosthetic. It's something actually I rarely think about, um, but it's a disability that I have that actually most people don't even know for a while. Yeah. Um, but I have to advocate. I was lucky uh, to one, have parents who raised me, um, you know, both considering my disability and not. Uh, they really empowered me to take on my own show, figure things out. And I think it's made me more resilient and adaptive. But then also I was lucky to be a part of the Shriners Hospitals for Children. And that hospital group, a lot of people think about the Shriners as like the funny dudes and the little hats and the parades and like the Shrine Circus and people see that side of it. But what they don't necessarily always see is this hospital group that has totally formed itself around the really special medical needs of kids with physical disabilities. Um, and I just think about what a, an amazing example of healthcare um, that, you know, I know has propped me up in my life and helped me to tackle my own life. And I hope that we can use that as an example in other areas, too. So I'll use that as a little bit of advocacy, but um, also an interesting fact about me. I love it. That's great. That, mm -hmm. I, man, you could have done that as two truths and a lie, and I would have never got that one. Right. <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. Well, listen, on behalf of the entirety of the board. We are so thrilled to have you join us and to bring your head and your heart to the things that we're trying to accomplish over here at Promo Cares. I know for me, as much as anyone, you know, it's just a constant reminder of the power of uh, positive outcomes. And it's amazing to watch how we continue to rally talent to the things that we're trying to do. So thank you so much for joining us. We're very pleased to have you. Thank you. It's a uh... It's a whole understatement for me to say how excited I am to be a part of this special team. Yay! <laughs>